Yo, what up? It's Roger from Mass Gorilla, the most cloutless podcast in Los Angeles. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see these podcast episodes and other interviews with your favorite emerging artists. And you can listen to this podcast on iTunes. Subscribe there too. Today, we have our second podcast episode and we're here with Kuko. What's good, buddy? What's going on? Shit, not much. Honestly, just um, kind of vacationing for a bit, I guess, quote unquote, because like I've been like just touring like a bunch um, throughout the last year. So these next two months just kind of consist of mostly just hanging at home and like working on the album. I think that's kind of like the main thing I have to work on right now. So it's a vacation essentially where I don't, I guess like the exact opposite of vacationing (laughs) for me, like you know, vacation is like you go travel and somewhere. Right, yeah. But for me, it's like coming back home and like being here for like a long period of time. <laughs> so I guess for the very few people out there who don't know, I feel like people might assume you're a rapper since you're on the Masquerilla podcast. But like, what kind of music do you make? Uh, I guess it's like an under the, the bedroom pop category. Yeah. But... I mean, I don't know. It's kind of like I'm. I'm like a genreless, but for the most part, it's like mostly dream pop kind of. Because vibes. I was trying to remember the first time I heard of you or heard your music, and it was actually was backstage at Lil Peep's first LA show at the Echo, and someone from the music industry was there. I can't remember who. It wasn't one of the typical people. They're telling me about you. They're telling me to check you out, and I assumed you were a rapper just because that's how they were talking about you. And then I think I looked into you and I listened to your music. I was like, oh, you're not a rapper, but you like know the Suicide Boys? Like, yeah. You're familiar <laughs> with Crystal Meth, their yeah, DJ. That's the homie. So how did you link up? Like, how do you know them? Uh, I think the first person actually like ever hit me up from, I guess like the whole underground scene was actually Marcus. Uh, Will you be my friend? Mm, okay. Uh, Puyas DJ and he like hit me up and also flex a telly mm, he like yeah. they, they both kind of hit me up around the same time and they were just like both like like yo like your shit's fucking dope um like we should we should definitely link you know get you know get get like get like a session going on like but in general like they're just gassing my music up it was like really dope i was like damn like this is like like these are people that, are, that work with like some of my favorite artists and then like not too like long after i mean puya hit me up um then like fat nick like followed me and eventually like crystal meth also hit me up like shake will mikey the magician ramirez it's so funny yeah um so like was there ever any talk of like oh you might tour with them or you know uh i mean yeah there's there's like just a lot of i guess ideas kind of out there you know like even like shows that might happen um even like collaborations that could go on. So it's like in the talk right now. Cause I feel like everybody just, everybody has like a really crazy schedule. So yeah. it's really hard to, I guess, make it work because I was supposed to get like a couple of features done, but like I didn't have time because I was like touring, but it's still like cool that they like fuck with me because like they always hit me up and like, they invite me like to shows and all that. Like Puya invited me to the show at, out here at the observatory. Like um, Crystal Meth invited me to the Suicide Boy show. Shit. <laughs> yeah, because I feel like I just saw a video of somebody bringing you out on stage. I can't remember if it was Puya. Or yeah, it was Suicide Puya. Boys. Yeah, he brought he brought me out. He uh he went on stage and he was like, "Hey, can I get can I get all y'all to take a picture of, of me and my friend Kuko?" <laughs> and we were on stage at the observatory. That shit was like really dope. That was like crazy for me because like damn like like this was really bringing me up here like I was like saying like I'm his homie like because it's funny too so after the first time I heard about you I started covering on Masquerilla we talked on Twitter and stuff and then I saw you at so your manager does this event called Solidarity for Solidarity for Sanctuary yeah. right um, can you tell us a little bit about that so yeah Doris. Uh, me and Doris are actually both first generation uh, kids, so both. Sorry, I sneeze. Uh, <laughs> both our parents, like, are immigrants, you know, 
and we kind of like went through that struggle of like watching our parents struggle with like getting jobs you know financial stability like and like problems with just in general getting the citizenship the residency like my dad was stuck in mexico for like cool three four months because they said they were going to fix his visa and all that stuff so that he could become a resident like basically they were trying to fix his residency and or just give him a residency and they like totally fucked him over and like he had to like stay there for a cool minute and then my mom was just like out here like like the u.s like paying all the bills for the house hey, when so, was this this was like in 2015 wow i was a junior yeah i was a junior in high school so and then doris also like you know she seen her parents struggle and whatnot so we both like well i mean she's the one that put the whole event to get the whole idea which is solidarity for sanctuary uh her company's miha management it's her and jazz two managers in that company um but she puts together this thing called Solidarity for Sanctuary. Basically, like it's a it's a benefit show for like undocumented families and race deportation. Sometimes it could be like like just straight families. Sometimes it could be like undocumented youth from like certain universities, like collaborating into like putting all the money that we got from from that show and giving it to the to the students. Mm. So I did the first one she ever threw, and that was also my first venue show. Was I actually here in Highland Park? Oh right, it was yeah. at uh, it was like right off York, right? Yeah, at the Hi Hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's shout out to the Hi Hat. Those, yeah. those dudes are cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that, so that crazy. Whole, whole venue is dope. So then, I think by the time it must have been the second one, is when you also started blowing up. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, it was weird. Like those first couple of months of me and like Doris working together, she was. Like always pitching me to like different like ANRs and companies, and they were like very disinterested. They're like, yeah, yeah, we'll check him out. Like, oh, we're he's not like he's not our, our cup of tea. And then like a couple months later, like out of nowhere, just like these like executives and whatever like start hitting us up, and even people that like ne- like it's like neglected, like not neglected, like rejected my music even started saying like yo why did you never tell me about kuko and the door was like what the fuck like I, I've so been like, like what do you credit that with like why did that happen um it might probably was like twitter still like twitter just like the numbers are always like going like going up uh but i think a lot of it had to do with like when that song came out it was just like like had even just that one song i think gave me like a huge platform that i didn't know i like just i i could get it was like it was actually kind of nuts like watching how the holo casienta just like completely turned my whole career over into something that's like like accelerating so like rapidly it was so at that point where were you like recording your music like how were you releasing it uh i was releasing my music through just some like like online distributor like those like it was it's, it's a CD baby. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I still record my music at home. Like it's always been like that's his day one. Like I don't really like studio sessions. Mm-hmm. I feel like I like I, I like being comfortable working with my own equipment. And don't get me wrong, like it's fun doing sessions with like different artists and different producers. But for my own music, at least, like anything that goes into the Kuko name, uh, I've been like needing to sneeze, bro, for like a cool like ten minutes. Yeah, it's the best feeling when it finally comes out. I know, but yeah, and then it goes into like the Kuko, like name, mm-hmm. has always been produced, mixed, mastered, composed, performed by me. Like, what does the name mean exactly? Uh, my Twitter at no, 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 like oh, your like my, my performing actual... name. Oh, Kuko. Uh, basically when I was younger my mom used to say I was cuckoo because mm-hmm. I, I was like I, I was a small kid with like a really big head so like whenever I would walk around like it was hard for me to like balance myself so I was, I was like falling or like hitting myself I had like banging my head on the wall uh, so she was like I'm you know I was cuckoo I'm crazy but my family speaks Spanish so to them it wasn't cuckoo it was cuco mm-hmm. so it was el cuco okay. like my dad my dad my, my grandpa whenever he whenever like my mom goes to visit my grandparents and I usually go with her, but whenever I don't, he'll be like, "Where's Where's El Cuco? Like, mm-hmm. I want to start Cuco, you know." So that was that was how how Cuco came to 
to be and before it before i was cuckoo i was actually heavy trip it was like some like head ass psychedelic like acid name that i was like so what year was that that was this like, was like yeah this was like yeah 2014 2015 when i was just making like super like psych music and then like 2016 i just changed it to cuckoo yeah so what so what made you want to take that change and kind of i would assume start taking it a little bit more seriously uh i don't know i feel like i, I was like one day i was just sitting in my room i was like damn bro heavy trip is just so corny i guess from my end because then i started like making music that wasn't as psychedelic as what i started making and i was like damn i don't know i wasn't feeling the name and and like i had already like previously thought about kuko but i didn't like know if like that was something that was already taken, and mm-hmm. at the time it was. It, I don't know if this that band still exists, but there's a band called Cuco. This is like this Mexican metal band. Oh really? Yeah. Um, and then there's like another artist, like Cuco Sanchez. That's like an iconic, like, mm. like artist. But I mean, I I was like, fuck it, whatever happens, happens. So I changed my name to Cuco. I started uploading music to Spotify and iTunes through as Cuco. And I mean, like slowly but surely, it became like its own. This like this whole old franchise is ended, and it like my own little enterprise where it's just like I everything is kind of like my my empire. That's, right. that's what I'm trying to say. Like, but I mean, so when you first started recording under that name, like what you were a junior in high school? Yeah. So were your friends and your family supportive, or was it something you were kind of doing alone, or what? Uh. I feel like my homies didn't really know about, like, my music until, like, after high school, to be honest. Mm. Like, only, like, my close, close homies, like, knew I was making music. But then that, like, uh, like anybody that just, I went to school with didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Like, they could care less. Honestly, like, I didn't even have friends like that. So, like, if I did have, like, homies that I kicked it with every day, they kind of knew that I was making music. And I would kind of show them with that. And that was really it. And then it just, like, popped off after high school. That's when, like, it was... Were you in, like, band in high school? Because I was reading that, you know, you played a lot of instruments. Did you play those at school? or is that just... Yeah, I played trumpet at school. What was that like, being, like, a band kid in... Uh, being a band kid, actually, at Hawthorne High was, like... It was interesting because, uh, like, most schools, like, to do those type of, like, extracurricular, uh, extracurricular activities, you got to be, like, a really, like, good student, like, on top of, like, whatever... Mm-hmm. But for Hawthorne, a lot of kids that were, like, on probation and, like, had, like, bad grades in school, like, just had, like, you know, like, even, like, cases of, like, drug possession and all that bullshit. Like, just kind of kids that weren't, like, doing great, either academically or, like, in, in real life. The school kind of was, like, ah, uh, they were, like, I don't I don't really feel like dealing with this. So, they all get, they give those students to, like, my, my, my band teacher. Oh, really? And they were, like, you, you take care of him, kind of, like get him out of trouble so and then and it was funny because i was mostly like i guess like a lot of like the like the brass section and like the drum the drum line and then like i guess like the woodwinds and like the like those marimba players are like actually very like like bandy like band kids that were like like you know how giddy yeah that's so interesting so it was it was was a weird combination of 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 those like kids and 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 the those two different sections and like two different like realms of like academics so it was it was a really interesting band experience and since i was in the band section like all like those like trumpet, the trumpet players were like very cocky too so i had to like teach myself how to play trumpet like they didn't want to like teach me like that they're just like oh yeah just like dude on your, with your lips and like you'll you'll figure it out i'm like what the fuck does that mean bro but they're also like the reason i got into like dumb shit like like the first time i ever smoked was with those fools like the first time i ever dropped acid it was in like the band so it was like the like the gnarliest experience ever it was it was fun, I think. But then after, like, all those, like, people graduated, because they were all, like, older. They were, like, all juniors and seniors. And mm. then I was a freshman. But then by the time they graduated, it was, like, the most, like, boring thing ever for me. Oh, really? Also, because, like, the students were, really, like, really dedicated. And I feel like I like I like being in, like, a group when, like, like everybody's, like, dedicated. Everybody has that same, like, type of dedication. And I wanted to make, like, a really good, like, have, like, a really good sounding band. Especially because, like, they named me, like, 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 the brass captain or whatever. Like, oh, that's, that's, like, a thing like the, like you you're in charge of like these sections and i was like so lazy for that like and my my band director would get mad at me and like all, and like all these kids would take it like it feels like a life and death thing it was it was weird because i mean I, at the end of the day for me it was like this is just like 
it's like like a, like, a, like an academic thing like it's kind of like an after school program it's not like like this real life thing right yeah and then everybody was like like no like we have to like like this is my life but then at the same time they were just like well i don't care about it but this is my life so it's like what the fuck so it was it was, it was like it got like really like boring for me and i got like everything just got on my nerves um but it was still fun i guess because i didn't have to like take pee and yeah. like and like i had i had like homies in there that like i grabbed like i grabbed my homies from like that were in M band i just kind of like i had like some of my homies and i'm like hey you should just join this with me it's fun. oh really yeah and then like just, just like just to like fuck around i feel like that combo of like band geeks and troubled kids you could write a sick teen drama like movie about that. Oh my god, no, that'd be so cringy. It sounds like it's ready to be, you know. Maybe like, it's like, like it can be, but it'd be like a very cringy, like yeah. like cringy teen drama. Like it's not something that. Or you know, <laughs> it could be like a really cute artsy short film. <laughs> <laughs> but so okay, so you're in band high school. You're finishing up high school. What's kind of your outlook on? I guess college and just like life in general are you like i'm going to college i'm going to do this or where are you at honestly i dropped out of college like really quickly um i i guess like hopping into real life was like weird bro like i didn't i didn't expect this at all like i was i was just fucking up in school all the time i think yeah like high school and college like for both like i how long were you in college I'd say like uh, probably like a year and a half. Because I could have sworn. So the first time I met you was at, I guess, the second Solidarity for Sanctuary. Yeah. And I could have sworn you were still in college. At I point. was. Yeah. That was. That was That's like so crazy to me. Yeah, and I was like, that was that was uh before, a little before the um. The spring semester like ended. Mm-hmm um but like i was just fucking up like i didn't even show up to classes at that point and sometimes i even because i like i had to do i i I didn't like going to class so i would skip class but at the same time it was like a lot of it was because it's like more meetings started popping up so i couldn't even like make time for school and i don't know i I didn't have like i'm not capable of shit like that you know like it just it sucks it sucks for me because like I still like school and I would like to go back, but I'm just not capable of like maintaining good grades and shit like that. Like I'm, I'm like aside from the music, like I'm pretty useless out of this shit. Like it's, it's but, like. So I mean, with your parents being immigrants from Mexico, was there this kind of pressure on you? Like you're gonna be the one who goes fuck, to college yeah. and you get a degree? Fuck yeah, dude. Like. So like, what were they thinking during this whole time? You're kind of like fucking up in college and not really going to class. They didn't know I was fucking up in college. Mm. They didn't even know I was giving classes. Sometimes I would like leave at like a weird, the weirdest time, saying I was gonna go to school, and <laughs> and mom would be like, "Okay, you should be hoping for the best." And um, sometimes I wouldn't even make it to class. I was like, get to the latest fuck, and I would like stay in the parking lot, just like make beats in my computer so crazy. yeah like a lot of a lot of beats from like the songs that are like on my my new album were actually made in my car like when really yeah i'm, I'm like recycling a bunch of beats that i had kind of had and i'm like putting them to work and same things for like like things on like chiquito and like songs for you like those are yeah. like a lot of things are just made in like the the garage like the garage the parking lot of like my my, my college that's so crazy yeah and sometimes i always meet up my homies after the after their classes and then like we would just like hang out and like fuck around more like my homie Juice actually, that was um, like the one the one fool I kicked it with all the time was this this, this uh, homie. His name was Juice, and it was funny. Like the first day of school, like, I, like people were, like the, the teacher, my English teacher did like a class introduction, and then like everybody kind of like introduced themselves and whatnot. And they were like, we talked about hobbies, and I was like, I don't know, like I make music um ideally i would not want to be in school and i would like to be producing or doing something else in music not you know and then this like dominican kid comes up to me he's like it's like hey bro you make music i'm like yeah dude he's like he's like that's sick he's like i do music too and he's like i also do like photos and shit he had his camera with him and literally after that, every single day, like we were just kicking it, cause like he he was like, 
he was like so hyped on like all the shit I was doing and like to this day like he's still like one like like one of my closest homies like it's we, so crazy and it's funny because like it's, it's so true what people say that like I think some of like your closest friends you made him like you meet him in college yeah but you know sometimes I I think I think your closest friends are the people that you hang out like the people that you meet in college that you go out and do shit other than mm. college stuff with yeah, yeah, yeah because like we would skip classes and we, we'd like go to like the park and like just fucking like i'd be like making beats and like he was something he would like be like shooting photos like for my first like merch drop he was the one that like shot the photos for that like little that like, little just two shirt collection mm. but he was like always like down for whatever like i was trying to do no oh, yeah like my closest friend still to this day is someone that i went to college with in new york um and we were roommates and yeah. we would just you know skate a lot and, you know, like, it wasn't anything to do with, like, the actual college experience. And, you know, like, that's definitely true. Just Yeah. There's a few people I've, I think I met in college that I've actually, like, stayed friends with. Like, my homie Chaz from, like, um, your grandparents. Like, that's, that's like, this, like, the rap group. Like, they're all, like, fucking dope. Um, Jews. I, other than that, I don't really, like, know a lot of people. And I have, like, homies from high school I went to college with that. I also, like, I had a homie that that I would make skip class with me and I'd be like, bro, like, fuck that class. Let's just go, like, <laughs> let's go get some food. So, you know, I don't know. Co- college is fun. It's like a nostalgic feeling because I feel like sometimes I would like to go back because it's fun to be in college yeah. when you're not doing work. <laughs> no, yeah, and, like, definitely as I've gotten a little bit older, I'm like, damn, like, I would love to go back to college and, like, learn about all this stuff. But at the time, I was so focused on doing what I was doing and trying to get it to this point where it just yeah. didn't, couldn't care less. But then I'm like, Oh, it'd be cool to take this class or take that class, but I don't know, like, maybe when I'm, like, 40 or something, you know? I feel that. No, honestly, like, I wanted to go back to school this summer, but there's so much shit going on. Like, yeah. I can't even, like, even taking online classes for me would be impossible. It's just it's just so nuts, like, all this, like, all these festivals and touring and shit. But but it's a blessing, though, because, I mean, that's what's making my money. That's what's, yeah. that's what's keeping me stable. That's just helping me help my mom. So, so how would you eventually break it to your parents? Like, hey, I'm not going back. Uh, actually, my it's funny. My my mom and my dad went to my first venue show, and they were, like, just shocked. Because, like, they had, they had like, never... They never thought that, like, my music was, like... Like, that's something my music was getting to do for me you know like when they saw like the sold out crowd of like there was like 350 people and they were like yo what the fuck like that's so crazy you know and after that they really started like like following me more and like seeing what i was doing all the music and it was like sometime late last year when i I remember i woke up one day and i was like my mom just like knocks on the door and it's like hey um, you, now that you're making money and everything, she's like, if you want to like stop going to school, you can stop going to school. Oh, really? Wow. And I was like, oh my god, like, like finally, thank God, bro, because I've I've already I had already been dropped out, so I didn't I didn't know how to tell him that. I was like, dude, like that was like the most like like relieving moment of my life. I was like, fuck, dude, like she finally like just this weight off of you. Yeah, shoulders. and I was like, fuck, but how's my dad gonna think about it? And then she was like, oh no, your dad and I agree to this. And I was like, "Oh fuck, dude! Thank, thank God, bro!" Like, what do your parents do, by the way? Uh, my mom, she doesn't work right now anymore. Uh, but she used to clean houses. Mm-hmm. She's a housekeeper, um, and also babysitter. But she got sick recently, stopped working. But it was kind of like perfect timing because, like, by that time, like, at the time I was like, "Yo, don't even trip about trying to find like another job or something." Like, because I mean, either way, like house cleaning, like, and her doing it for almost twenty years, it's like. It's like very backbreaking, you know. It's like yeah, like yeah. every day going to clean a house and like doing like like going up like stairs all the time yeah, and like so just, fucking crazy. Yeah. So after that, I was like, don't even trip about like trying to go for a job. Like just like I'm I'm gonna handle everything now. Like you know. So yeah, she's so sick. Yeah. And then my dad, he still works. He's um he's a limo driver, but I'm trying to I'm trying I'm trying to get him to quit. But he's like he's like no no don't worry don't worry. He's like I'm gonna keep working. So well, like, I mean, like a year, you can just hire him to be your personal I know. driver. Yeah, for real. <laughs> so I mean, I, he's he's funny though. Like both of my parents are very like supportive and like they were super proud of everything I'm doing. Like they, my mom like always like checks up on my social media. That's so sick. And she even check up on me too sometimes. And since I'll be doing like some like some really depressing shit, and she'll be like, she'll send me like the message like, "Why do you feel like this?" She's like, "You know, I love you, right?" 
and I'm like, damn, like, I, so like my mom's, my mom's like, that's so cool. Yeah, she's like, like, like one of the best and like the strongest people I think I've ever met in my life. So, like, so my, I mean, like, honestly, both of my parents, you know, like going through the whole immigration thing and like making a life here and almost losing the house like twice and Shit. like recovering like themselves, just like keeping themselves like grounded is insane but then like it, it becomes hard and my dad was actually telling me like he's honestly I, I think it's like if this wouldn't happen with you like like you like making these i i think we we might have probably like had to move out the house sell the house and stuff he's like he's wow. like you, you literally like kind of like came at the right time and like saved us you know like not like i just came out of nowhere in their life because no, <laughs> but it's no, like, no, yeah yeah, but it's like this, incredible though. yeah it's it's really crazy for me to think about that so does that put more pressure on your shoulders? I mean, obviously it's like this great feeling and you're supporting your parents and you know, soon enough, you're going to be like fully supporting them if that's, you know, what yeah. they want and you, what you want to do. But does that put more pressure on you to kind of be like, Hmm, maybe I do need to go out there and like sign a record deal or something like that. Um, recently I haven't been asked pressure to sign a record deal. That's not like, mm. but it is pressure, I guess, to like maintain the music going and, and, Keep, I guess keeping myself relevant too, to an extent, is like I'm not concerned about I guess, I guess like popularity, but at least to not completely lose that that uh that base of supporters. Because I mean, the thing about it is like they're very loyal though. Like they don't they all they don't they don't miss a thing that I'm doing. Like they're always like there keeping track of everything I'm doing. But I just wouldn't want to lose it all because you know it's like that's my source of money my source of income like that's where i help my parents from so it's like it's a bit a bit a bit worrisome but like at the same time it doesn't seem like it's going there like at any time soon so i'm kind of using this time that i have to really stabilize my parents and then hopefully save life myself buy myself mm -hmm. a house like before before anything you know just just fucking have stability and i feel like I'm not super concerned because I feel like I'm doing it right. You know, like yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to buy like, I'm not trying to buy like this fucking, like I'm not trying to spend like 400, 500 K on a, on a fucking chain. And then like, you know, it, it, to me, like things like that are cool, but that's not, I guess for one, that's not me. And two, I think that's like, that's, I think not spending money on shit like that is going to like, just make me like a lot more richer than then i guess it's kind of like i mean like that i saw that article it's like we're 21 savage on like, on like i was Miami. just yeah. thinking of that like on i was like, about to bring it up and it's so funny yeah because like, he came to this genius revelation that he was like yeah i stopped buying jewelry because i want to have more money yeah it's like, I, he's <laughs> yeah, like, it's like i'm getting richer by not buying shit like that like dumb shit you know it's like it's cool to spoil yourself sometimes don't get me wrong you know like sometimes i'll go out and like spend like hella money on clothes but it's, but it's like what's the most amount of money that you spent at once in like the last you know few months um uh, i want to say it's funny like it's it's probably been on a cool couple like like almost like 20 racks just to like but it was like within like the span of like three days because but it was because i was building my home studio mm -hmm, okay I so like say, what the hell are you buying with yeah that? i just bought like i bought like um like hell shit i bought like my juno 60 i bought like my move my move to sub like the moves the sub subsequent 37 mm -hmm. that's what it's called about my oh shit fuck, no it's all shit. good um my drum kit i bought so like, is that that's still you're operating out of your parents house yeah that's it's, so it's in my garage like we I, like they, they were just like cool with like me like taking over the garage and remodeling it like soundproofing it so crazy yeah like they they're just like they're so excited like they i think i think they're also very attached to me because i mean we're very family oriented think like i'm i'm blessed that i have a good relationship with my parents you know because i know a lot of people don't have that and i like I, I i'd spend my time with them as much as i can because you know like i just with my grandparents too it's like i don't i don't know when they're not going to be around so like there's people that I see that have everything and like they don't even appreciate it. So I mean, like I'm just like they always remind me like yo like always appre like appreciate what you have and whatnot. And because of that, I'm like we're very attached to each other. So like it's funny because I think to them the ideal situation is that like 
I don't leave the house. So like, they were like, yeah, yeah, just take over the studio. It's just <laughs> like, and they know that I'm like, I'm actually looking at houses. Like eventually, like I'm, I'm trying to move out, but like, but they're still cool with like me still using their house whenever I need to rehearse and whatnot, or like use the studio. So they're just like, yeah, 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 like it's all there. For, like, use it. You know, you're helping us. So like, let what we're down to like help you out with this. That's so tight. Yeah. So it's like, so I, I just, I just like to take advantage of like all the blessings I have and, and not let that go to waste because um i've seen them like even just like watching them struggle to like give me everything that they could um you know it means a lot that like like i don't don't know how i could ever repay them they don't ask me to repay them but it's like i don't know how i can repay them so it's like i just everything i do is literally for them you know and like and it's cool because i mean they're kind of like like second parents like my band too you know like everybody in my band kind of just has like like different different backstories different struggles you know so it's like so they can like go to my parents too as like their own parents sometimes so it's like it's it's really cool like my like the hospitality with my parents and 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 my whole team like they it it works very well damn that's so crazy yeah so you're still independent yeah are you like meeting with labels or like you just don't care uh i meet with labels sometimes you know I i feel like if i ever do sign it's gonna be like um it'll be like because i I, it's something that really benefits me Mm -hmm. it's not something that just like that i need a a quick check you know you're right and but for the most part i'm not really like super interested like i think if i drop an album through a record label like maybe like that's something i might think about but i think like signing for a fucking eight ten years not something i'm super stoked about like right now i just have like a distribution deal mm. i just it's through like to like get me like my music out there and on itunes and whatnot they have like a good marketing team with me so and then my pr team as well like fucking they're killing it yeah well yeah. she's killing it yeah. emily she's like 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 the like gnarliest pr person out there and because it's crazy because so i asked that because I see your posters all over the city and I've seen like pictures of your fans. I guess they're all over the country, right? And I don't want to give away too much information of where I live since we do record this in my home. But there's, <laughs> there's, there, man, your face is postered all over my neighborhood, very, very close to my house. So how, so they're Apple Music posters, billboards, how'd that whole thing happen? Uh so apple has the artist of the month campaign and for may i was the artist of the month Mm. so yeah that was like i was gnarly like when when, like doris told me she was like hey so they're gonna like put you the artist of the month campaign and they're gonna put like you know billboards and posters around like la and they're gonna be some in new york of you know your album chiquito like basically promoting it and yeah so i mean apple like came through and marissa at apple was like the like she's like my aunt <laughs> she's kind of like <laughs> yeah she, 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 she like she kind of treats me like my aunt she's like yeah whatever you need like you know i got you like she, she she's like very much like a mexican aunt like to me like it's it's like like super very like super heartwarming and it's just like I have a team there that, that actually gives a shit about wow. me like like crazy and so then they just push they push Chiquito like to the max like it was so so dope to see that like love coming through and then seeing like all like the fans take like photos with the posters it's so gnarly yeah so what was the first one that you saw like where were you um the first time I saw it we were on our way to Salt Lake Salt Lake City, and obviously to get like north, you gotta you gotta drive kind of through here. Mm-hmm. So, my tour manager like he like stopped the bus and he was like he's like all right he's like I'm gonna go walk real quick. I was like okay, and then I go and I like see my posters right there. I'm like wow. So then they just kind of flick me up with the posters. So it was just yeah. I think like maybe if you like push it in closer to you, so then it's not. Or I don't know. I mean, just as long as your mouth is close to it. <laughs> yeah so it was like a surprise they were like hey yeah kind of like i kind of knew where we were going at the same time i kind of did it it was kind of like cool like 
Then I like, it's like it clicked, and they were like, "Oh, we're gonna get a photo real quick." And I was like, "Oh shit, are these the posters that we're trying to look at?" And they're like, they're like, "Yeah." And I look <laughs> to the side, and it's like the posters like right there. And then in New York, we did another like my my photographer did like take some like portraits of me in front of like the mural of mm, yeah, the iTunes that's mural. Crazy. It's like a where like was, was that? Painted. Was that like in it's Berlin? It's in Williamsburg. Yeah, it's yeah. so crazy. So have your parents seen them? Uh, yeah, they actually drove out here with my grandparents. Like for them to see your face plastered and it's a big head. Was that part of the whole thing of like, I don't know. Name? That was, yeah, it was just funny. Like cause Chiquito and like uh-huh. the big head. So like, does that make all this like more real to them? Yeah, I think they're that. I think my, for, for them, they were just like seeing all the articles come out and they were like, wow, that's crazy. Like, like you're really like making it. Yeah. Yeah. So when those posters go up, are you getting any like weird texts from high school friends or girls? I'm like, hey, saw your poster. Dude, you don't What's understand, up? bro. Like, it's so <laughs> fucking weird. Like, I get like even messages from like homies and like, when I even like people that were never my homie, like people are like, dude, we went to school together. Like we used to hang out all the time. It's like no, we didn't. Like that's you, so weird. you bullied me, bro. <laughs> you know, it's oh like God. it's like that type of shit. Like it was just weird. It's like, bro, like, like congrats. Like that's dope. I, I dope to me at the same time when they're like, congrats. You know, like that shit's crazy as fuck. But then there's like those people that are definitely like, trying to like, like get get to like know me now that they never got to know me in high school. It's just like, oh, uh, we were we we sat we sat like six tables across from oh each other. God. Like we, we we were cool. Remember that. So is it like hard having when like you do a show in LA? Do you have like a hundred people hitting you up? Like, hey, can I get on the guest list? Oh yeah, like, so many people. It's hard to get people on the guest list. Like that shit gets packed so quickly. Yeah. Mostly with like close homies and my parents, family, all that stuff. But it's like hella hard for me to like just get anybody on a fucking guest list now. Yeah. It's a so- bitch. So, I mean, so I guess what else has been happening? You've been touring a lot. So, like, what's, I guess, like, 2018 been like for you? Man. Um, it, it's crazy. Like, I got I got to play, like, a bunch of, like, really crazy-ass festivals. Like, Governor's Ball, Coachella. Uh, we did Tecate Supremo. That one was in Juarez. We did a Ceremonia, which is in Mexico City. Well, it was like Toluca. It was like an hour away from Mexico City. I think the festival was just kind of crazy to be on. Because mm. especially like in Mexico, like I think the crowd, the crowd in Mexico was like so gnarly. I was, I'd never like, to this day, I haven't performed in front of the crowd that I could cry that big. Like it was, and they all knew my words. Like I performed in front of big crowds, but like not in front of a big crowd that like knew my words. Like by like every single person that I could just look around and like everybody's singing it. Like at least like a cool like five six thousand people there just like oh, like singing that shit. I was like, "Fuck, bro." <laughs> that was so the sounds like part. there might be a Mexican tour coming up. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping so. Like Me- Mexico is just such a big market for. I think streaming too. Like that's what we're we're trying to push. Like mm. like streaming numbers because, like sh- like people people I guess don't really know that, but Mexico is like a huge huge market for music, and. I think it benefits me just being an artist that's from the United States that also happens to be Mexican because it benefits me on both ends because I get right. to get the streaming, like all the love from the U.S., but I also get the love from like like Mexico and all of South America, you know, like people from Chile, Argentina, Colombia are always messaging me like, yo, when are you coming here? Come to Brazil. Like that, that's like come to Brazil messages, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you and iCarly coming to Brazil. Oh my God. So, but I mean, at the same time, do you feel more pressure, you know, like being like a like um, child of immigrants from Mexico? And it's kind of almost like you're tasked with representing. Uh, it is a bit pressuring sometimes because I feel like I'm not as woke hmm. or like I guess as knowledgeable and shit as I should be sometimes. Uh and I didn't get like, like I didn't get fully educated about like a lot of issues. I had to like learn by myself on a lot of stuff. And even then, it's still like there's so many things that I don't know that might be going on. And it's, and then aside from that, I also have to know what's going on in the industry. I have to know what's going on with myself and what's going on with my family. So it's like, it's crazy because they're like, oh, you know, we, 
you know, that's you're you're there. Like this is you at the top, and I'm like fuck. Like that spotlight's on me. But right. what I at least what I what I what I'm able to do is uh, at least I have I have friends that have a voice that like needs to be heard, and I'll you know I'll use my platform whenever I can. I like share anything that they need like have shared like whenever there's something I can do for for the community, like I'll try to do it. You know, do it the best way I can. Cause like sometimes it's just hard to like be an artist and be like, I guess an activist figure at right. the same time because yeah. I feel like that's what like automatically being like a Mexican artist you're like expected to be that, and it's like hella difficult because like damn like I gotta be like all this shit now because it's like 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 all eyes are on you and like you're linked to this and like it's so many things like building up on each other. Yeah, because I mean I think it's just simply enough something that white musicians or just people in general don't have to deal with like they're not tasked with being representatives of their community yeah but dude. for a minority like the pressure is immediately on and you're like representing you know an yeah. entire other country yeah it's crazy mm-hmm. like it's crazy so it uh, the thing i guess about it is that like i always get those messages though where people are like yo like thank you for like representing and like showing us that like it's possible to like make it as an artist of of you know mexican descent or even just like i think these artists of color like different diversities in general like when they kind of go to my music they have like oh damn like this is guy's like he's not white you know he's mm. he's a mexican dude that's like just making music and he's kind of doing whatever the fuck he feels like i'm not making you know i'm not i'm not falling into the same box also that the industry always puts latin artists into like the same latin category with like reggaeton you know and but it's kind of or like just like Spanish pop. It's all that really comes out. You know, I'm I'm doing my own little box of music where it kind of falls in that dream pop or indie category. Like I still make rap music. I still like like producing for other artists, and I'll still try to work on my metal project. You know, it's just like that where I'm just kind of doing whatever the fuck I want, and that's kind of what my artist platform is. Like I don't do shit to appeal to anybody. It's just to do shit by myself and and not bullshit the people that that fuck with me you know like to show people this is like me and like the rawest form so i mean you mentioned bedroom pop what do you think of i mean like what do you think of that term kind of because i feel like the explosion of bedroom pop has kind of furthered your career is like that a genre that you're comfortable with being like labeled under or i mean it's a bit I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's like, it's not bad because, I mean, it's just like very, I guess, kind of shows that DIY yeah, like yeah. aspect or factor of, of the music that's like, yo, this is like literally made by some kid or kids in their bedrooms and just making this shit. But at the same time, like, at the same time, I, can't, I guess it can go into the category like, even with like rappers and shit because it's still like pop pop means popular music you know as far as i know and i mean it could kind of just go to the same shit to like like a lot of like soundcloud rappers yeah because like, like that's kinda... how i always think about it is like rappers in the underground they hate being called soundcloud rappers and bedroom pop is kind of yeah the soundcloud rap of pop music so i was always curious yeah it's it's just weird i guess like i mean that because it's is it's, it's I don't I don't know how how to go about I guess explaining like the feelings towards yeah. it because like I've talked to, I've talked to I guess like a lot of like other homies like I guess are categorized in like the bedroom pop shit and it's just like it's a little I just weird like we don't know how to feel about it yeah so I mean but you've made friends with a bunch of people who are kind of under that same flag right yeah I got hella homies like Temper X like Jasper Bones Interwave like all those fools are like homie homies yeah shout out to them. And also, I saw, do you have stuff coming out with Claro? Yeah, I have music coming out with Claro soon. It's like a, it's, we did like a little song I think a couple of weeks ago. Because you so. were in her latest video, right? Yeah, yeah, I just remember that, yeah. I was in the video for Flaming Hot Cheetos. So yeah, stuff coming out with Claro. Um, I'm just really trying to work with like a bunch of like other different artists and shit too, like yeah. that I'm homies with. Like, I did some stuff with like Eddie Zuko. Um... I'm really trying to get some work in with like Victor and Omar Apollo. 
I want to get stuff done with like Jasper Bones. Mm-hmm. You know, like those are all like super talented artists that I want to like. I want I want to pick their brains and be like, yo, like what can we do? <laughs> but then on the other hand, like I also want to work with like a lot of big artists that I'm homies with. I don't really give a shit about working with artists. I don't know. Yeah. Because I feel like people always want to be like, oh, yeah, let's get you a session with so-and-so. But it's like, bro, I don't know who the fuck they are. Yeah, like, I feel like that's, like, the most classic kind of, like, industry person thing. of Like, oh, we're going to, yeah, like, get dude. you a songwriting session with this artist. And you're like, who? Like, yeah. Like, I, have you heard my music? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make sense. It's weird. So. So, I mean, I guess we kind of glossed over this entire part. But, like, what kind of music were you listening to when you were growing up? Mm, fuck. A lot, dude. Like. Boleros, I guess, are one of the main things, you know, like really classic, like Mexican music. Obviously, a lot of salsa and cumbias because I mean, whenever I would go to, like the family parties, I was, that's what, like they were DJing. Yeah. But also like a lot of a lot of hip hop and rap. I think that's one of the main things I used to listen to, like for my own wanting, because I didn't really know how to. I guess when I was younger, I didn't really know how to admire like boleros and all that shit. It's kind of like, oh, like yeah, it's nice. My friends listen to it. I'll like listen to it, but it didn't really come out of my own will to be like, oh yeah, you should like, you know, put put you know put Pierre Canela as a banger, you know. It's, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I didn't know what the fuck it like. I guess a lot of the history behind it was I didn't start appreciating anything until like probably when I was, like yeah, when I started like playing music. I think like any younger me- generation Mexican can like can like appreciate the music, but I think to like a certain extent. But I think once you start, like, playing music and, like, understanding the history behind a lot of, like, the older, like, the older cats of, like, Mexican music or just, like, a lot of Spanish music in general, um, you get, like, a really crazy understanding of, like, why this stuff is so important on the more, like, sentimental value for, like, the older generation. But then, like, for my own will, I was always into, like, you know, 50 Cent, T-Pain, Eminem, shit that was, like, playing on MTV. Yeah. Like, reggaeton stuff, like, Calle 13, We See Yandel. That was my shit, bro. Like, that was, like fuck yeah dude i'm i'm lit yeah because i feel like when you're younger even if your parents are telling you about the coolest stuff you're like oh my parents are telling me about this like yeah. i don't care like i want to listen to you know like what my yeah friends it's funny because like my, my dad would always try to like he would get me into shit like like in excess and like new order and like i didn't start fucking admiring that shit so like like year like a little year a couple years back and i was like wow this shit is actually so fucking fire dude what the Dude, fuck? Dude, same. Like, my parents have this, like, crazy record collection from, like, the 70s. And they would try and show it to me when I was a kid. I was like, I don't care. Like, I'm on the internet. Leave me alone. <laughs> and, like, now it's like, oh, my God. I can't believe you have this record. And, like, yeah, I saw this person. Like, what? You were at Woodstock? Holy shit. Tell me the story. You were at Woodstock? Yeah, my dad what? was at Woodstock. That's so crazy. Yeah, he was a Woodstock kind of guy. Did he drop acid? <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, so I was raised in the kind of like Catholic household, so I don't. We never really had those kind of talks. But you know, maybe one day we'll have like a man to man talk. I'm like, so dad, <laughs> what was Woodstock really like? Besides, you know, just telling me that it was fun. Yeah, that's crazy though. Yeah. Fucking Woodstock. But yeah, I mean, shit like that too. Like seventies music, obviously psychedelic music plays a huge part in in my my music. Like, actually, Love is one of my my favorite psychedelic bands. And then like, the Lemon Pipers are fucking fire. Um, Velvet Underground, you know, Doors obviously. Like like saw like the the whole um, Sgt. Pepper's album. Yeah, it's so it's crazy. fucking like gnarly to me. I think that's like my favorite album from like the Beatles. Oh really? Yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. They were on another level. Yeah, bro. They were, they were probably just tripping so hard. And like it's funny too because even the Beatles, I feel like when I'm younger, I'm like, oh, the Beatles. Everyone likes the Beatles. Who cares? And now like I press play, I'm like, whoa, they reached these levels that yeah, haven't bro. been reached since. Yeah, like like yeah music from like the 70s is like really crazy i think like yes was also really mm-hmm. really nuts like that that one song i think that one song was like as much as it's using like memes um roundabout you know that where, where the to be continued song was like yeah that that song is actually so fucking crazy because like that like the way the way the bass is like 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 doing all those crazy ass runs and like just those like the beat behind it to me is like what the fuck like anybody hears it like oh it's that meme song but it's like nah dude it's a fucking masterpiece yeah like i feel like you know how something like coffee 
is like kind of an acquired taste when you get a little bit older. It's the same thing with music, just going back. Yeah. When you're just a little bit older and listening yeah, and it's to funny because it's funny because it's like the way people like are with like movies and they've like seen like, every type of music like movie. It's like that's like me with like music. I I have no type of knowledge in like any of the shit other than like music. It's like like you could ask me like any type of question about like sports or like any trivia about like movies and actors and shit bro i'll be like bro i have no fucking clue like i'm being real with you like i i just know that the, the incredibles 2 is coming out that's why i fucking know bro but when it comes to music like i i just i'm such a geek to that shit dude like i'm a gear nerd too you know like i don't i don't just have music gear it's like i have you know that like my my modeling app is a fucking axe effects too you know and then before that i had like the johnson millennium 150 you know I, i'm i'm trying to get like the barefoot um like the mini something it's, it's, i forgot to fucking call this but there's like these like expensive ass speakers you know I'm yeah like, like i see you posting all those things on instagram like oh my baby just came in and it's like a new like pedal or something yeah. i'm like I have no idea what this is, but it looks cool. Yeah, and it's funny because, like, I feel like half the people in my fucking, like, that that follow me just, like, this is the same shit. Like, why does he keep buying this? But it's like, no, dude, like. So, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just funny. Like, I, I think my, like, the diversity in my music taste is very weird, too, because I, I, I like a lot of like experimental shit too, and like a lot of a lot, a lot of prog music, a lot of metal. Like so, I like, mean, how'd you get into more of like the Suicide Boys type of stuff? Um, I got into it through Volumes. You know that band, yeah, Volumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know how Young Yogi's. I was like, he, I mean, like, he had his like rap music, so I was like into that. Yeah. But then like I see who'd like kick it with Puya, and I would always like see Puya like you know, like in like like his videos. And then I actually like checked Puya's music out. I was like, damn, this is actually fucking fire. And then from like Puya, I started like seeing like Fat Nick and then like Shake One and then like Ramirez, like started like all those like fools started coming up. And I found out about Suicide Boys like not too long after too. It was like, it, it, was, it was just like this weird turnaround where I was going to metal music into this whole like different scene of like underground mm-hmm. music. And I was just tripped out. I was like, damn, like, this is... Because it, it, it's obviously, like, a lot of it's very inspired by, like, emo music and, like, metal music, too. Like, one way or another, you know? Especially yeah. with, like, the like their shows. Like, the way they are, it's like... That's a straight-up metal show, dude. Yeah, like, kind of my take on the whole thing is kids growing up who would have been into hardcore or something, they're just into this instead. Because it's yeah. like, you know, it's like the new thing. It's the new cool thing. And it's kind of... I mean, I don't know. I would say it's almost more... You know what it reminds me of? It's, it's such a weird comparison but you know you know like the way that um that a guitar will follow the kick drum you know mm-hmm. it's like run, 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 and the kick drum is like dr, dr, dr. like it's the same way with like 808s and 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 the bass of like the like the 808 kick drum and the bass and it's like boom, 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 boom. you know it's it's the same shit like wow. for me it's, it's like I'm, my I'm, mind. I'm, fuck bro i keep it's so yeah good. it's like I, I i literally see it like that like just the way like the the like especially gent guitars like if you hear shit like sh- like structures or volumes and there's like all those offbeat guitars like but you know like weird fucking patterns where like the kick jumps just following that shit it's the same fucking thing with 808s and kick drum from the 808 drum pack and those like you know the, like so especially when you hear a fucking distorted bass it remind like it'll it'll have like that's that's what i first thought of when like i heard like like that whole wave of of, of like really heavy distorted basses with like with like those with all the, the trap beats and shit and i was like dude this reminds me so much of like metal music in the aspect of like how the guitar will follow the drum kit it's always kind of been like the the bass follows the 808. So yeah, that's how I see Seriously, it. And it's my just mind like, is being blown right now. That that's how I got into it because I kind of saw so it as crazy. that. Yeah, I saw it as that. So I was like, like that's fire. I don't know why. It's just like always been like, like it's not something new for both genres, mm-hmm. but it's like, but when you, I feel like when you when you're into like when you are into both genres of music, and then you get into that that new wave of like underground like rap. It's very like, 
I don't know. It just it just correlates so heavy, and that's how I just thought about it too. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, it, it was just some like weird thought that I always had. But that was that was literally why I was I, I thought about it. I was like, that was like the like a different hardcore scene basically. Because like kids that are into like that music are also into like metal music. Like, yeah, straight yeah. up. Like you see them pull up at shows and like they're wearing like a fucking Slayer t shirt, like Dude, it's a fucking so like behemoth t shirt. You know. Um. This past Christmas break. I was back home in New York and Ghost Man was in New York too and he had a show on Long Island and we went to this venue and it was like it was like a sold out packed show but it was hardcore kids and they were wearing Straight like up. all these like Dude. band shirts. I, I like, know Whoa. so many hardcore kids that fucking love Ghost Man, bro. Yeah. Like that like like that's so fucking cool to me. That's so sick. Like that that like I think like that that way I mean people have already kind of done like I guess like screaming vocals and shit too on like rap music but like Ghostman has kind of just perfected that. Like, like he knows exactly how to approach his music into a way where it's like, dude, like, I'm. He's. He just. He obviously looks like like this. Like you see him, you just think he's like, oh, like he's like a metalhead. No, dude. yeah, because like, like I think he. I mean, I'm pretty positive he used to play in bands in Florida and stuff. Yeah. So it, it's just so dope that he has this whole new wave of like music and like he's starting his own wave of 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 like just his own following the way that they follow him it's this underground rap scene and then it's also like the hardcore scene just coming together and being like yeah let's fucking sock each other out in the pit yeah like i think he's doing shows with code orange this summer which is like oh my god my god that's crazy i hope there are some medics on the scene it's gonna be nuts but so as passionate as you are with music you've also recently launched a clothing line yeah so tell us about that uh, so uh, I launched a clothing line not too long ago called Fantasies Easy Living. It was originally it, I had another name. I, I'm I honestly forgot that shit. The <laughs> it was some some shit I had to come up with like last year. But I, I I it took me a long time to like think about a name and think about how I want to approach my clothing brand. And once I kind of did, I decided, hey, like these are gonna designs that designs I'm gonna use like. I started developing it. Right now, I'm kind of like taking a break from it because we're like just doing like a bunch of like like turnarounds, like reshifting everything, kind of like with the production and and how we're gonna market it. We're just trying to like also like my designs. Like I've been like slacking a bit because I've been on tour, and I'm just kind of trying to find people that can like consistently kind of whip out some new people, like people I guess I could hire, you know, yeah. to like really help me make my brand. Dude, the craziest part is. I saw it. I was walking through where you get your merch produced, and I saw it. And I was like, "Oh, that's so sick!" And I was like thinking in my head, like, "What is this?" But I didn't like ask anybody. And then a week later, you launched the social media pages. I was like, "I should have known better." Of course, <laughs> it makes so sense. But I think the logo is sick. It's yeah. kind of like a '90s throwback vibe, right? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I- I'm trying to to make it like a more like nostalgic, like streetwear brand, where it has. The- that's why I'm taking so long because I'm trying to like really like outsource like from di- like trying to find different places to outsource from because I want to do like more cut and sew stuff like mm-hmm. really, really like bring some crazy crazy ideas to the table when it comes to like having a clothing brand and whatnot because, um, I I I just really like clothes a lot you know I think, like like I, I love brands like Palace and like Supreme and shit like that but I also shit like shit like, APC and like Acne Studios so it's like, uh. And I like you know it's 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 weird because it's like all over the place you know because I like shit like that I like like more like high end streetwear and then yeah. I also like shit like Givenchy and like Balenciaga I think that's just dope but I just want to guess make shit more accessible in a sense obviously not like super like fucking like cheap shit because then it's like it's cheap and it's gonna be like shit quality but right. at the same time it's kind of like where it's not priced so fucking ridiculous where it's like oh cool it's a shit t-shirt for fucking 600 bucks so you i know? mean where's the name come from like what does that mean exactly uh i guess fantasies living is kind of like everything's kind of like, seems like a dream right now mm. so i feel like this i'm me making a clothing brand is like that kind of fantasy that i've always wanted to fulfill it's kind of like and i feel like in your head is like like easy living is like it's also a song title, actually, by Billie Holiday. Really? Easy Living. Oh, it's, okay, it's like okay. an old jazz song, but it kind of like, it, it's weird. Like, it came into the name, and then the song kind of like, I remember that there was a song called Easy Living. I was like, wow, that's why I, like, uh, my unoriginal ass. But 
it's just like i don't know i feel like when you like if obviously a fantasy is kind of like an ease it's like a way of like you thinking about like an easier way of like literally just an easier living you know it's like i thought of it as like a 50s marketing thing in a sense kind of like where like on some like literally on some fallout shit actually like like that's where i got the song from easy living like like it's the way it's it's like vault tech you know like has that like essence of like the 50s obviously yeah. but like in the future it's kind of like how, how my shit is in general like a lot of my songs might sound sampled but it's like they don't sound like samples that would have been like available in like the 50s or the 60s or even like the 80s it just sounds like i sampled something from like the year like 3000 and then like i added it into like a trap beat you know it's like that type of like idea where it's like it has an essence of like nostalgia but it's like a future nostalgia where it's you're reminiscing on something that hasn't even been like created yet it's it's such a weird mentality that i kind of have on it but i mean it sounds like the process of creating music and potentially the process of this fashion line might be very similar yeah pretty much but i just keep them separated because i feel like i want my clothing brand to be uh its own entity no yeah that's that's as much, I guess the concepts are very much, I guess like the same in a sense, but but I want to have just a different variety in in designs and like different vibes that I can add to the fucking clothing brand. As much as I hate the word vibes, um, or I guess the use of the word vibes sometimes, it's the best way I can describe it. But sometimes it's shit, because I mean I have shit from like really like cute little like designs I see fantasy on them to like that like '90s design that I put out to like. The bicycle day design you know, with albert hoffman and it says fantasy but it has like the, the s is like very much like a dollar sign so it's like a weird like combination of like oh cool this is like some like old like psychedelic history but at the same time there's that fucking that fat like fantasy logo where it's just it, it, it does like that weird it's a weird like time crunch where it's just like you have like the the like the 70s and like the 2000s like into the logo and then I have shit like that looks like a Grateful Dead logo, and then I'm trying to make like I my my best friend's boyfriend did a design for me. It's just like looks like a straight metal logo, you know. Like oh, so, so. so I'm trying to I'm trying to make a variety into it because I can't do that shit with like correlating it with like Kuko and it's like hey, it's no right, you know, it's right, like right, this right. dreamy Kuko and then it's like these like no, like these logos that are all over the place. And it's I mean, like, and you still make merch for Kuko, obviously. Mm-hmm. So you know, there's no real point to kind of cross them. Yeah, especially especially because I had like crazy ideas for Kuko and then. And then um, merch company decided that they, well they didn't decide it they just kind of suggested like hey if you have all these ideas I feel like you'd make more like more of a profit to like selling it to a market that isn't just Google fans you know obviously like a yeah. lot of my fans are gonna like go buy my clothing brand but no but I mean like that's the thing and that's the thing that I tell my friends in the music scene because I feel like you know making merch doesn't it like isn't say isn't second nature to everyone and I'm like bro trust me. When you're touring in like the middle of nowhere in like Nebraska or something, like and and you're selling your merch, kids just want a shirt with your name on it. You know, like they don't want anything crazy. I mean, yeah, yeah, make it look cool, but they just want your name on yeah. the front of the shirt. You know, yeah, literally. And um, so it's it's I don't know. I guess it's marketing and like approaching things in a different way has always been something like I like doing because I don't like sticking to the same thing all the time. So, yeah. I just, uh, I'm always just trying to do something different. That's why I'm trying to, like, produce for different artists and expand myself musically and all that stuff. Because I feel like I can only do so much with just myself in the name. I feel like once I expand out of my comfort zone and continue doing more shit that I'm not used to doing, then I can really, like, excel and, like, really increase my capabilities as a creative and hopefully be able to like it's like reach way higher levels and like things that already kind of exist in the industry and just i guess just amongst like people i kind of just want to like i've never been uh i guess a popular person and i don't really care about being a popular person but i guess like I just at least if I'm a beast proud of something, like I want my work to really like have a fucking like statement to be at a point where it's like, look, honestly, like 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 I don't care about like I could get like 
like two listens and but as long as i'm creating something that's just like groundbreaking in a sense like i'll be straight like i'll be fine like i'll be like yo like that's that's fine to me like i'm just doing whatever the fuck i want to do i just want to be able to like make a statement with like the stuff i make and be like yo like this is not like backed by some like big corporate agency or whatever i'm not like bullshitting everybody it's just like this is me and this is what i'm trying to fucking do like i'm i'm trying to be the best that i can be and like show my capabilities and show people like what the fuck i can do what i'm capable of and it's just like yo like i don't i don't need any like outside resources to like to make some of the best projects or items in the world you know like i just want to do it and leave that there for people to consume that makes sense yeah that's deep (laughs) <laughs> and, and man man from to go to with what you just said to segue into this so i saw on twitter you're talking about doing a song with smoke perp tell us <laughs> about that oh yeah um i guess nothing solidified yet you just kind of like uh I've, i don't know i just i've always wanted to make a song with smoke perp like yeah. i don't we don't have anything like solidified yet i haven't like i haven't even sent him anything yet but it's just kind of like he hit me up. It was like, "Yo, like let's get something going ASAP." Oh shit, that's crazy. So I don't know if, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, I mean, at least I know he was down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I, I just, I, I fuck with like rap heavy dude. Like I have, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of beats. Maybe even like up to like thousands. You know, it's just like I make so many beats like all the time, and it's like, and I always have like a different like person in mind when I make a beat. Sometimes, like sometimes, like I'll make a beat. And I have like, and then out of nowhere, like I hear like the dr- way the drum is like kind of like patterned. And I'd be like, "Yo, this person would like sound fucking good on this beat." And it's just funny because like I, for me making beats and and like whipping out all my instruments and like plugging everything in and like just straight up like just coming up with something on the quickness is like 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 second nature to me. Like it's it's so. I, I don't know, like, my, my, my homies have just kind of seen me, like, make beats and shit, and it's just, like, it doesn't take me long to make, like, a beat. Like, to make, like, to make the Loca Siento loop, it was, like, like, 20 minutes. Whoa. Like, it was, like, 20 minutes. I was, like, all right, I have this idea, I have this idea, I have this idea, and I just kind of, like, put it together, and I just wrote to the song. And then so, I just did the solo. So, when, when you're thinking, you said you have hundreds of beats, and, like, a lot of them, you think, oh, this person would be crazy for it. What, I mean, what's the process of, are you actively seeking out people, or you're not... There I'm not. There I just kind of like I, I can't. I'm. I, I think I am there yet, where I can like have the beats sent to them. Yeah. But I feel like I don't want to send anybody beats until I meet them, mm. and I'm cool with them because like I feel like I feel like I don't like the same way with the session thing. I'm not gonna like get into right, session with right. something I don't I haven't kicked through with. Like I'm not gonna send beats to somebody I haven't like really linked up with and like no, I'm comfortable with giving them my beats and shit. You know. That's why, like, the only few people I think I've given beats to is probably just, like, the homie J-Quest and Made in Tokyo. Because, like, we've hung out and, like, we just talked about, like, projects we want to do. So, um, I'm just very picky with, like, my production and everything I do. Like, I don't like just handing it out. Because I don't mind keeping my beats. You know, yeah. like, I don't, at the end of the day, I'll put them to use. Like, like Lucy, that beat was, like, like, I made the beat for Lucy in, like, 10 minutes. And then me and Quest just heard it and we were just like, all right, fuck. Like, Quest is like, what the fuck, we should use this. And I was like, yeah, I kind of want to rap on it, though. So I just, like, rapped on it because I felt like rapping on it. Um, like, Lava Lamp was just, like, a beat that I made from, like, my homie. And he never used it, so I was like, yo, can I use this? Like, since he never used it, he's like, yeah. He's like, and I sent him, like, something, like, on a like a faster beat. So, and I just, like, took that other beat back for Lava Lamp. And then I used the beat. And then I made Lava Lamp by accident, actually. It was just something I was testing out of mic. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, Sunny Side was just, like these two songs that i was working on i just kind of put them together because i was bored i was like i don't know how this is gonna sound in this fucking when you're like making these beats you've mentioned a lot like psychedelics is that part of the process for you uh not during mm-hmm. i think i've actually like stopped doing a lot of shit because i went through like a little issue with myself with like substance abuse um and it wasn't with psychedelics but was but, that before or after your music kind of started popping uh, after the music started popping off i started like really going through like with other shit and i was like bro like fuck you know and my girl was the one that kind of told me like yo like you need to like you know cut it out and shit so now i don't even like i don't even smoke you know like actually because one time i also uh i smoked with my homies and it ended up being like sherm you know oh really yeah that's like 
I feel like that's something you only hear about in like rap songs or like or like these like horror stories passed on from friend to friend. That's yeah, so no, that crazy. shit's like yeah, no, I hate like it was like a shitty experience. Like I almost passed out. I was like inha- I inhaled it and like I was like for the thirty minutes I was like like I was just blacking out for a bit. I was like, oh fuck. What? That was like that's that some like Los Angeles shit. Like what? I mean, I guess. I mean, it's just kind of it's like this some like street shit. I guess it's like mm, yeah. sometimes you just get unlucky and you don't end up smoking weed and it's smoking sherm and it's it was yeah. After that, it was it was just like hard for me to like smoke without getting like really anxious yeah. about smoking. Like being like, uh, oh, this is gonna fuck me up again, or is my am I straight? Even if even if I knew the homies I was with, and like even if I knew that they weren't like they they always got like they always had like good weed. It was just I was like fuck like I don't I don't I don't care like I'm fucking like no yeah dude something like that happened to me when I was like eighteen and just ever since like yeah it's not really my thing it's yeah. not really worth it to me to kind of like you know go down this path and yeah so I just see like I, gonna happen yeah I, if anything I just mostly like drink now like like every once in a while. Actually, I, I, I kind of drink a lot, but <laughs> but I think I just feel like more comfortable like being drunk and yeah, because like alcohol. I mean, I'm not like I'm gonna promote you know whatever, but it's definitely you can kind of manage it a little better. Like if you're drinking beers, it's you know yeah, it's a process. It's not like oh, I'm I feel just gonna, I feel like, like just in general, like I control myself very well because I've just since i was like 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 a sophomore i was like was, i didn't know i wasn't doing clean acid you know i was doing like 25 mm. i that was like the and that was like that was fun for me <laughs> you know I, it, but it kind of like i guess i opened my eyes and realizing how bad the shit i was taking was it was when like some kids took like one tab and like they like had to call the ambulance and shit like at the school and i was off of like i was off with of like two tabs and i was like oh, oh no shit I was, it didn't like give me a bad trip or nothing. I was like chilling, but it was like damn, like that's it's like it wasn't LSD, you know. It was like twenty five I and VOME, so it's like it's like way different psychedelic that like fucks with you. Like like if if you were to take the same type of dosage f- of LSD at twenty five I, like it would literally like murder you type of shit, you know. Like it's like it's like way smaller, smaller doses. Like Whoa. so it was shit like that that like. But it's funny because 25 Eyes is the reason that my music just switched up. Like, it was, like, the best, in the best way possible. Psychedelics are, I think, I think the only drugs that I have had, like, more positive. I don't, I'm not promoting anything, you know. No. Like, <laughs> yeah, fucking, but it's just, like, I guess it's just, like, a history behind how it was my sophomore and my junior year. Because, like, I was always doing it. And, but it did, like, have, like, it's, like, more, little, like, long-term effects, you know. Like, like, there is, like, I'm just very jittery sometimes. And, like, I get, like, very twitchy. And I'm, like, fuck. Like, I just start looking around. It's, like it's just shit that like fucks at you and that's why i just stopped in general like doing shit that's why i just kind of like stick to drinking now every yeah. once in a while I'd maybe like indulge in like a psychedelic trip but for the most part i'm just like i'm just like yeah honestly fuck that like i care about myself and i care about my mom you know like mm-hmm. i don't i think the last last thing i would ever need is for somebody like to have to give my mom the phone call that like some shit happened to her son yeah you know like i don't i don't you know i think i just stick to like the cleanest things i can stick to like and that's it and like if i didn't have that experience with like sharing i probably like i'd probably like still smoke and shit but it's like after that it was like it's just really hard for me to like smoke without feeling like that sense of like anxiety that like it might it might be like this fucked like right because i mean now that you're touring a lot what's it like being on the road or being in the van or being backstage is there kind of those pressures to yeah honestly i i don't i don't even like I, I i'd never given to like any pressure from like anybody that i offer me something i'm just like i feel like it's just because i mean for the most part too i always like have good people mm-hmm. by my yeah. side like so nobody ever tries to force anybody to do anything and it's like whenever they kind of just like oh come on you gotta do this like i mean like i don't you know it's like it's just it, it's just kind of like it's not even that like it's just kind of like pressure it's kind of sad i think it's just like damn like like this is really your life bro like this is dead ass what you're fucking doing like yeah that's the that's always been the weird part to me even when i was younger is kind of like oh like i have hobbies and it's like music or like i like sports and like your hobbies are like drugs and it's kind of i mean i don't know to each their own i'm not gonna judge yeah and it's not it's not even like i guess even not and i think nobody's like judging i said that point is like concern it's kind of like Mm -hmm. damn bro like i hope i hope you're okay because like i mean i've seen my like my family like first you know like like, firsthand, like, my uncle's, like, 
go to that shit and it's like it's fucked up like I, like they lost everything you know it's like it's it's like the craziest thing watching that happen and just it's worrisome more for me it's more than anything because i'm 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 a very compassionate person that's why like i like the shit i do isn't to like help myself out to help my parents out help everybody around yeah. me out and it's the same shit it's like when i see people doing that shit it's like fuck like like i worry about them as fucking and they're like people and like their fucking health because like damn bro like i've seen i've seen my like my friends and uncles like and family go through that shit and it's like that shit is not cool and then i go into that shit myself is the worst fucking feeling ever especially you have to like let it go it's like gnarliest feeling ever yeah well i mean it's crazy that you've already dealt with that because you're only 19 still but you've already kind of like yeah it's funny because like nobody knew about it like nobody was like the only person that kind of started realizing it was my girlfriend but yeah. like even then like she nobody even if she didn't really see how like bad it was like i was like i was like always just finding ways to go like like for like like two minutes i was all i needed to go get by myself and just kind of get the shit i needed to get over yeah. with and then just yeah. go back hang out there but then i disappear for like go to the bathroom real quick and then just <laughs> yeah just, just, like that was like it was it was the weirdest it, it felt like i wasn't even there sometimes it was it was um it was it was like a like euphoric kind of like out of body thing i'm like watching myself i feel like i was watching myself be famous at that point oh really yeah i feel like i was watching myself perform and all that shit it was weird so i mean what's so like 2018 you're doing these festivals what's it like being kuko now like are you gonna like recognize on the street at this point or like what's going on yeah i actually got recognized today i was really? yeah i was in downtown and i was with my homie and we were going to we're going to acne and we were all just like talking and some girl just kind of like looks at me and she like stops me she's like hey are you kuko and i was like oh yeah and she was like oh can, can i get a photo with you and i was like yeah, yeah for sure and took the photo her mom took the photo and then um, I think at this point it was kind of casual. It was like me and my homie and my homegirl was kind of there like, okay, cool. Like it didn't, like if it was nothing, but like it, but it's in that it took a while to get used to. I think it was like, it was funny. Like the first couple of times it happened, I was like, even in my own city, like sometimes I'll just be walking around because I like walking around my town. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'll skate to like Subway and like, or tar- a Target uh, to Starbucks. Cause like there's a little plaza, like, nearby me and some people just be like hey you're Kuko huh I'm like oh shit I am <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll like snap in there I'll be like oh fuck I really like that's me like wait a second yeah that is me and then sometimes I'll be like oh damn that's crazy like, like what are you doing in, what are you is that Hawthorne too like what are you doing in Hawthorne I'm like, well <laughs> I live here <laughs> so. I mean is that is it overwhelming it seems like you know you're not like that kind of type a personality that would like that like wants that hell no dude like i i I hate attention like i think it's super overwhelming i feel like at shows i feel like when Mm. like everybody starts like like kind of figures out where i'm at like i think after a show they'll like overrun me and i have to have like a security guard like be like all right single file line so you get the photos and everything but like but i still like doing that at least you know like getting the photos i like getting you know, I like knowing why people fuck with me. I think that's one of like the coolest things for me, like the impact aspect of of what I do. But sometimes it's like fucking crazy because I'm like, oh fuck, fuck, fuck. Like I'm just having like the worst panic attack, and I'm still like, you know, I have to like socialize and everything. But I don't mind it because I like I like knowing the people that listen to me. I like knowing the impact I had on them, and even it's cool. I think it's cute too. Like sometimes, like like just people getting like hella excited like oh my god like you're that's you and it's like crazy as fuck and like sometimes it's funny like I'll, like it'll it'll out of nowhere sometimes what i've noticed like a recurring thing it'll be like very like like manly like looking dudes and they'll like 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 very scary people like they'll come up to me like and they'll sometimes like come with their girlfriend too and they'll both be excited but sometimes the dudes like just way more it's like it's like oh man bro like i love your shit dude like dude that's see that's the craziest part to me that i always think about is like if like a famous person is out in public and someone's kind of like looking at them weird or sizing them up for a normal person it's like oh this person's gonna like do harm to me yeah. but for a famous person it's kind of like oh this person might want to beat me up or maybe they're my fan 
Right? Yeah. Like, it's the weirdest. It's no in between sometimes. Because, like, sometimes, because, like, I mean, obviously, like, in, in the, especially in the, like, Latino community is la machismo. So, it's, like, uh, Latin guys have a tendency of wanting to always size up, you know, be the, be the man in any given circumstance sometimes. Where it's just kind of, like, a weird thing where it's kind of, like... Like you know, I got I got yeah. the biggest muscles. Like I can I can drink the most and everything. So sometimes a lot of a lot like it's it's half between people like that fuck with me in the Mexican community or like Latin community because they're like yo like this dope is representing and everything. And the other side is like oh like what a pussy like I see comments like that what a oh, pussy really? what a wuss and oh shit and it's, but it's like weird because like sometimes like so because you think like literally that like you read my mind bro like you think that shit it's like like they're like either they it's like a they don't know who the fuck I am. They don't care. Two, they are a fan. Or three, like they like just hate me. I want to beat the shit out of me. It's like it's just, and it's just weird because like I, just, I always kind of just think about that. Like sometimes like I kind of just sit there and like even at like my own shows. Like sometimes you'll like you'll see people that just seem so disinterested and like and you can just tell like their friends force them to go because like <laughs> yo this is what's going on and they're like oh fuck like and then like and then sometimes what I like doing is like there, there's like at festivals too like. It'll be some like buff Chad looking dude that'll that'll just be sat like sitting there like this. And then I, and then when we're doing like like Lucy or some shit, like like one of the heavier songs, like if they're up in the front, like I just get up to their face and like I'll start rapping and shit and they're trying to like act like like nothing's going on and shit. Cause I mean, it's not that I'm like threatening or anything, but it just makes them uncomfortable. It's That's like, not it makes... toxic masculinity on their part. Yeah. They're like I'm at this show, but you know, yeah, and it, I, 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 guess, I guess, I guess, cool yeah, buff guy. and I guess, and I guess, it's just like it's just, I guess, it's just, it's just me trolling because, like, as I know exactly what like, like a lot of these guys are thinking is, I just go up to them and start fucking with them, because like it's just yeah, an uncomfortable, it's, like, it's, it's an like, uncomfortable bro, situation. If you're at the show, like, especially if you're in the front, like it's okay to yeah. have fun. Because I've been in that situation where I'm kind of just like standing there, like. But me, I, I'm not doing it because I'm disinterested. It's just because I'm awkward. But I've had times where, like, I've had an artist go to me. And I'm like, oh, what the fuck do I do, bro? This is weird. So, like, how, so do they you... they just stay there and just like, and it's just funny. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't like push it. I'm like, <laughs> like start like poking them and shit. But it's uh-huh. just like, I, I like having fun with that shit because I mean, at the end of the day, it's like you either choose to have fun or don't have fun, and you kind of just choose to enjoy shit or hate on shit. And yeah. I feel like that's just like, it, it's just funny how like the whole system of how people like you react how people that don't like you react how 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 uh wide of a variety of reactions you may have to people going up to you and i think just human nature in general is a very interesting thing because that's that, that's pretty much the idea is how i see it it's like it's human nature and there's people that react different types of ways right and it's funny to see like those different type of like reactions because uh, like it's like damn like there's really just people and then like sometimes people just act cringy too like not even just like and that's like outside of like outside of me being cuckoo or whatever people recognize me just like i feel like i just always think about how like people act and how people are and shit and, like sometimes i just see people like being people like but i just can't think of like what runs through their head to be like yo like i definitely look cool sometimes and it's like and it's not like anything specific it's just like sometimes it's like you see somebody like he's doing some dumb shit some cringy shit and it's like wow like this person just really thinks of this shit yeah i i mean i would hope it's just part of being like a young kid and kind of finding yourself yeah. but there's some adults who are fucking assholes and look like idiots too yeah. out there. so you know sometimes they don't just grow out of it but yeah dude um, so like what's up for the rest of twenty eighteen? What do you got on the agenda? Uh bu- 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 bu. Honestly just a bunch of shows. Hopefully the album's done by this year. Um I think Oh yeah, actually not think actually we are going to Europe. This is my first time going to Europe. Um same with like South America, it's my first time being there, going to place a couple shows in Rex Orange County. Um going to canada again with rex orange county then i'm also doing like montreal at a uh, Fe- oceaga festival mm-hmm. doing a couple festivals in like europe like doing a festival in paris then bleep fuck you gotta edit that out we'll just go bleep
Yeah. Yeah. Wait, just like really quickly go. Bleep. Go do it. Bleep. Okay, that's what's going to be over when uh, you bleep. say that. There. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, I'm going to do it again. Bleep. Perfect. Cool. Yeah. A couple of black festivals in like Europe. We haven't announced. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. We, got, we just announced like two more shows in England um, during a festival in Chile, Argentina. Uh, it's like a lot of festivals I can't even talk about yet because we haven't announced them. But so, I mean, you know, like so the, like a year from now, next, what month is it? Next, next year in June, where do you like see yourself? Or where do you want to be? Honestly, bro, I just want to have a house. I think I want to, I want to have a uh, nice little, little place. Where? You're staying in I want to stay in like Hawthorne? the South Bay, like either Hawthorne. It doesn't matter, like Hawthorne, Carson, Torrance, Gardena. Like it doesn't, or even like. If I could afford it, like Manhattan or some shit. I feel like window. you should like buy a house right next to your parents' place. I feel like I that know would be that would be fitting. dope. The, the house that was right next to my parents is actually was on, it was on sale, but wow, it got sold like super quick. And then my neighbor's a bitch. So you know, from a year from now, there might be some more houses. Yeah, on sale. hopefully, hopefully I could buy the houses next door to so I can actually rehearse too because my neighbors are always complaining about oh, shit. Really? Like they're like. You complain about my dog, bro. So they know like that you're kind of a successful musician, and they just think I you're think, a fucking I think, dumbass. I think they do kid. know. I think one of the one of, one of them knows that I'm a musician, but, but by the same care. time, I feel like they do just think I'm a dumbass. I feel like they just like <laughs> like like fuck like why 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 do we have them as our neighbors? Uh, I feel like if they, I'm sorry if they see this, <laughs> but <laughs> you guys not you guys ought to chill the fuck out. <laughs> my dog was just barking, bro. Oh, <laughs> He's gonna do shit to you. <laughs> Oh Fun. man, neighbor drama. Yeah, bro. Well, shit, man. That's about it. I mean, thank you so much for yeah. coming on. I really appreciate that. Nah, dude, thank you for having me. This is dope as fuck. Yeah, I've yeah. actually, I've been to very few podcasts. Like, I guess interviews. It's always been like regular like interviews. Where it's like, oh yeah, we'll edit this and everything. But yeah. like, I've always wanted to be like in a cool like shit like this. Yeah, well, thank you. You're you're definitely on. When I you know finally was like, fuck it, I'm gonna do a podcast because like it needs to be done. Uh, I had a whiteboard I was writing names and you were like in that top, you know, like three of like who I want on first. And then you blew up and I was like, I hope he's still down. But dude, yeah. I like asked you, like it was probably like a week ago and you're here sitting in my home today. So I appreciate it, dude. Dude, thank you. Oh yeah, bro. You've been, you've been rocking me for a cool minute too. That's fucking fire. Yeah. And I was super honored. You had um a photo I took of you as your profile picture on Twitter and Instagram for yeah. a while. Yeah, was it was like, like I, had, I had to change it because, no, uh, that's fine. yeah, that's fine. Fine. Fucking, we did like the Apple Music campaign and had like the artwork, but yeah, yeah but that, that photo was like for like the longest. Dude, it's so crazy. Yeah. It feels like it was like five years ago. It was like psh, last year. Yeah, like, dude. Not even maybe, I don't know. But yeah, thank you again for coming on. Uh, to the folks listening at home, remember to subscribe to Mads Gorilla's YouTube channel. Share these with your friends. Support it. It's also available on iTunes. Subscribe on iTunes. It's probably available in a bunch of other places for podcasts, but I don't know. So you can search for them. <laughs> but yeah, and make sure to go follow Kuko and support him because if you listen to this, you're going to want to just be pouring your money into him because he's the sweetest, most genuine kid out. Damn. Yes. Hell yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. <laughs>